Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com. So today we're going to be learning one of my favorite ukulele tunes, the Magic Ukulele Waltz. So this arrangement comes courtesy of Ukulele Zaza. So if you don't know who he is, I'll put a couple links to some of his performances in the description box below. So go check it out. He's an amazing ukulele player and musician. So if you're a fan of these vintage-esque sounding ukulele tunes, then you'll definitely want to check out his Etsy shop. He's got a couple books filled with his arrangements that you can purchase. Um, I just picked up a copy for myself, so I'm looking forward to learning a few more songs in this style. So let's talk about this lesson. So this lesson is part one. And in part one, we're gonna be covering the first half of this tune. So if you guys wanna learn the second half, we're gonna be covering that in part two at rockclass101.com. Just do a search for Magic Ukulele Waltz, or you can click this link right here. There you'll also be able to get the complete tabs that you can print off and follow along with, as well as access the on-screen tab viewer. This is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you want. Just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's kick into this lesson. We're gonna start off talking about uh, the rhythm and what a waltz is. A waltz means that we're gonna be in three, four. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. There's three beats per measure, right? And the quarter note gets the beat. So that's really important to grasp that concept. Now the rhythms for this song, they're primarily quarter notes and eighth notes. The rhythms aren't too hard. Sporadically, we have some harder rhythms sprinkled in, but for the most part, quarter notes and eighth notes. So very simple for counting and playing along in time. We're gonna be learning this song bar by bar and then putting it into little sections, probably four bar sections. That'll make learning this song that much easier. So let's kick off with this intro. Here's what it sounds like and then we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to point out is that first little lick that we're playing. That's going to be a reoccurring theme that we hear throughout this arrangement. So if you learn it once, you've got it for all the times it repeats, because it repeats quite a lot. So let's go ahead and start off right there. So this first bar is straight eighth notes. So we have one and two and three end. So we're going to start off with the open C. Then we're going to the second fret. You can use your index finger, that's perfectly fine. So we've got open, second, and then the second string, and the fourth string, follow that up. So let's try that together. We have O, two, second string, fourth string. Lastly, we're gonna follow it up with the open first, and the third fret of the first string. We can use our ring finger for that note. So we have O, two, O, 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 three. So again, if we call it out, open third, second fret, second string, fourth string, first string, third fret. Remember, straight eighth notes, so keep it steady. One and two and three and... Now let's talk about the right hand finger picking approach. Most of this tune, I'm using a three finger approach. So you guys really have a couple options. First option is you can use these three fingers where your thumb gets the fourth and the third string, index would get the second, middle will get the first string. Or what I like to do is to use these three fingers. So same concept, thumb gets four and three, middle finger this time gets string two, ring gets the first string. So if you're new to using a three finger picking approach, then check out our finger picking concepts. It's a complete course that talks about using a three finger approach, a four finger approach, and a thumb approach for finger picking and finger style playing. So watch the right hand as I play through that. I'm using that three finger approach. I'll go slower. Okay. So if we try this one together, guys, we have two and three and one and two and three and let's try again two and three and one and two and three and okay so not too hard now bar two is just going to be one note we're going to go up to that third i'm sorry seventh fret on the first string with our ring finger okay 
So you can hold that out for about half the bar. And basically, during the second half of the bar, we're gonna slide down and get to this G chord, which will shift up throughout the neck to finish up this intro. So if I put bar one and two together, I have this. One and two and three and one. Okay, so it actually may be easier to grab that last note of bar one with your index finger. That third fret of string one, you'll have a little bit more room to get up the neck with that ring finger. So give that one a shot. Okay, so again I have one and two and three and one. After that, you're gonna go ahead and just slide back down, and you're gonna make a G chord. So that's gonna start on bar three. So if I count out this rhythm slowly, I have two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, one. So really, you're just hanging on the seven for just a little bit, and then you're just gonna use the rest of the bar to shift down to go to the G chord. I labeled it as a dotted quarter, so half the bar one and two and three and one. So the G chord is the same chord that we've played a hundred times, so we'll cover it really quick. It's the index finger on the second fret of string three, ring finger on the third fret of string two, and middle finger on the second fret of string one. And the G string, of course, is open. Now, the thing with this chord is it's gonna move up, and it moves up with one change to this basic G shape that we're, we know and love. And this changes this. So once you have the G intact, I want you guys to move it up by a half step. So literally two, three, two moves up to three, four, three. Now here's the one change that you have to do. This ring finger is gonna slide up to fret five. So you have open, third, fifth, third. So this first chord is our C minor six. So literally all we're doing is we're taking the G, going up a half step, and then moving that ring finger up another half step. Okay, so you wanna practice this change from G to C minor six. But you see how those fingers, all three move at the same time. So I don't go boom, boom, right? I go boom, all at the same time. So you can practice going back and forth just to get used to that. And as we move forward again, all that happens is this, guys. You're taking the same shape with this extended ring finger. You're going up another half step, and then you're going up another half step. And that's it. So that's that third bar and the fourth bar. So it's all quarter notes. So we have one, two, three, and then the fourth bar. And that one's gonna last the whole fourth bar. So it's not too hard for these chord changes, but let's break it down one more time and go a little bit slower. So first we had G to C minor six. And the next one, we're going up to this diminished, which is literally a half step up. So take that C minor six, move it up a half step. Now you have zero, four, six, four. Okay, and then move this one up another half step. And now we have a G seven. So we have open five, seven, five. And that's our fourth bar. And that gets held out for the entire bar. So the hardest part about these chord changes is the fact that there's this shape that you gotta keep intact and as you move up the fretboard, that's always the trickiest thing. So once you get a hang of going from the first G to the C minor six, moving that ring finger up an, an extra half step, then you just wanna get used to moving this shape up and keeping it intact. So a lot of times I see people struggle with moving up, things start to get into the wrong frets, so you wanna just work on that slowly and just keep the fingerings, or keep the shape intact as you move up. So it's really tricky, but once you get a hang of it, it becomes really easy. So we've basically got the whole intro learned, guys. Let me play it one time through, and then we'll try it together. So it sounds like this. Two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? So again, the key thing to remember is in that second bar, that seven just hangs out for about a beat and a half, so about half the bar, 
and the second half of that bar you're transitioning down to make the G chord. So let's give it a shot together. Two and three and one and two and three and one, two down to G, three. Strum, 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 strum. So you notice that on all those chords, I'm just using my thumb to strum down. So that's it, just a very simple strum down. So together. It sounds like that. So nothing too hard, nothing fancy happening with the strum. So there's our intro. So you wanna just take a second to get that down and then we're gonna jump into melody A. So melody A, the first four bars is the first phrase of this and it sounds like this. Okay, so let's break that down. The first thing you notice is that that first bar is identical to the intro, right? So we're finally seeing, or not finally, we're starting to see how it repeats, right? So same thing, and we can use that index finger again um, to grab that last note. Okay, after that, we're jumping back up to that seventh fret. We're gonna fill this second bar with some more music. Okay, so let's break that down. So this second bar is gonna start on the seventh fret. So we're gonna play the seventh fret of string one. And then we're just gonna strum a C chord, which is gonna be hitting strings four, three, and two open. So the thing with this one is, we're gonna strum the chord and move our left hand down to grab the rest of the melody. So it's a little tricky in that regard, so check it out. So you see I'm playing sev strum two o oh, o, oh. sev strum two o oh, o. Oh. So I'm using that strum to buy me time to grab, to move down to grab the next few notes. So I have sev strum four to two, just opens. Then I'm moving my hand down to play second fret of string one, open string one, open four. Okay, so sev strum two o oh, o, oh, right? Second, first, fourth, and the rhythm for this would be one, two, and three, and so we have quarter followed by eighth notes. One, two, and three, and. So to put it into context, we're gonna put one and two together. So we can think of the rhythm as a beat in our head. We can think of it as one and two and three and one, two and three and. Da 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 ba 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 da. You can also sing it. Remember, if you can sing it, you can play it. So if we try it together, and we put bars one and two together, then we have one and two and three and one, two and three and. So let's try you and I, but slower. So we have two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Okay? So one time without me calling out, we have two and three and. Okay, let's look at the next bar, so bar three for this melody A. Okay, so this bar is going to basically be playing out of this C chord. So we're starting on the second string open, and then we're strumming a basic C, and then we're gonna fill it out the rest of the bar with melody notes on the third string. So it's two, open, two. So I have open E, strum two, O oh, two. So again, open E, strum two, O oh, two. So you see I'm just using my index finger to play those notes. So it's the same rhythm as the previous bar. We had a quarter followed by eighth notes. One, two, and three, and. Okay, so if we try together slow, two, and three, and. One, and two, and three, and. Okay? Now bar four 
It's very simple, it's all quarter notes. So it starts on the E, and then we're gonna strum the C twice. That's it, so it's one, two, three. Okay, so again, it's open E, strum, strum. So just down strums for, for these hits. So that's the first four, but let's put bar three and four together and then do one through four. So bar three, we have two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three. Okay, if we try one through four, we have two and three and one and two and three and one, two and three and one. without me calling. All right, so let's look at the next four. So bars five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so the first thing we notice is that bars one and two are identical. So the first two bars are the same as what we just learned. O two O O O three sev strum two O O. So the first half is the same as what we just did, but the second half is different. Instead of playing out of a C, it's playing out of a G seven. Okay, so let's make the G seven. So it's the open fourth. Then we take our middle finger, put it on the second fret of string three, index on the first fret of string two and our ring on the second fret of string one. So stock G7 chord, one that we've played a lot. So it's a little tricky because we're gonna be lifting up our index finger and putting it back down. So a little weird uh, doing one finger lifting up and keeping the other two intact. So here's what this third bar sounds like. Okay, so you notice that you're only down for the first two hits and then you're up. Go ahead and keep it down for right now. So second string by itself, strum, and then we're going to lift it up and play open second, the third string, and then back to open second. So again, we have that same rhythm where it's quarter followed by eighth notes. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and. So same rhythm we've seen before. So again, let's try it, you and I two and three and one and two and three and so again two strum o two o okay after that we're into the next bar put it back down and we're going to play string two strum twice and then we're going to start off the beginning of our next phrase which is this cool little lick that we're gonna be playing. So let's talk about how that works. So our rhythm's gonna be quarter, quarter, eighth, eighth. So it's one, two, three, end. So it's a little tricky. One, two, three, end. And I'll play into the first beat of the next bar. So I have one, two, three, and one, one, two, three and one. So you're gonna basically play second, strum, strum, and then you're going to go ahead and lift that index finger up, put it on the first fret of string three, play that note, and then hammer back onto where you just were, which is the second fret of string three, and then go back into forming that G7 chord. So it's really tricky. One, two, three, and so you see that movement in that index. One, two, three, and. So you lift that middle up, put the index down for the first fret of string three, and then you're gonna hammer on to go into the next bar. So before we get there, let's put this bar five, six, seven, and eight together. So one time by myself, then we'll try it, uh, you and I. So it sounded like this. So let's go through it really slow, starting on bar five. Two and three and one and two and three and one. Two and three and one. Two and three and one. Two, three and. 
So now we've got one through eight. So it's probably a good stopping point for practicing and getting that down before moving on. So one through eight sounds like this. So it's actually quite a lot, right? And then also factor in that the intro starts us off, which we didn't even play right then. So you're 12 bars into it, but as you see, it's already a lot of music. So let's look at the next four for this next phrase. So we're looking at nine, 10, 11, and 12 for the A melody. So it sounds like this. So it starts off with that hammer-on. So we're gonna go ahead and just practice that hammer-on to get used to that transition. So again, we're basically playing out of that G7. So we're hammering on to that second fret. And then we're, the whole time we're keeping this ring finger actually anchored where it is. Until we need to lift it up for the melody notes. So this whole bar is eighth notes and it's all single notes. So that's one thing you want to get in mind before playing it. So we're going to go ahead and hammer on one to two on string three. Put that index back down to that first fret and then play the open after it. So we have hammer one open. Okay, so we're just going string three, two, one. Hammer, second string, first string. Then we're gonna stretch with our pinky to five and play that note and move it back to the third fret and then the open. Okay, so it's a lot of movement. And if you're not used to doing stretches and stretch chords and stretch licks, then check out this lesson about increasing your left hand reach on the ukulele. Okay. So it's tricky this bar. We have one to two, dropping back down to the first fret of string two, open A, fifth fret on the A string, then the third fret, and then the open A. So remember, we're starting on the end of the previous bar. So if I count it out, I have two and three, and one and two and three and now the second and the third and the fourth bar are primarily playing out of that G7 with one chord change we'll talk about in a sec, but it's got the same feel for two, three, and four. It sounds like this. Okay, so the same concept for the right hand's happening as well. So that's gonna be plucking three and one together. Then we're gonna strum twice. And then we're going to have an eighth note hit at the end of it. So the first one's just gonna be an open string. So we have pluck, strum, strum, oh. Again, so it's pluck, strum, strum, oh. Okay, then we're going to this G sus four. So it's a G seven sus four. So the only difference from the G seven is instead of that ring finger on the second fret, we're gonna take our pinky, put it on the third fret of string one. So again, the same thing's gonna happen where we have Pluck, strum, strum, oh. So that rhythm's one, two, three, and. So together we have one, two, three, and one, two, three, and. So real slow we have one, two, three, and one, two, three, and. So you can tell that bar two and three is pretty much the same thing, just that chord changes. So if we were to put that together with the first bar we have, Okay, in the fourth bar, you see it's the same context, right? Together, strum, strum, and then we're going one to two for the hammer-on. And that hammer-on's gonna start into that same lick for the next phrase. So let's put one through four together. So slowly by myself, then we'll count it out. Okay, so let's break that one down. So we have, again, starting on the end of three, two and three, and one and two and three.
three and pluck. Strum, strum, oh pluck. Strum, strum, oh pluck. Strum, strum, hammer. Okay, so that's the trick with that. So this one, it's a little tricky, but since it repeats with the same right hand, it's not too hard once you get it down. So again, two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three and one, two, three and one, two, three and one. The next phrase sounds like this. So a cool little ending for the A melody. So let's break it down. So the first thing we notice is kind of similar to the last four bars. So the first bar is the same. And then it goes to that G7 again. This time all we're gonna do is play quarter notes. We've got together three and one, strum, strum, and then we're switching to a G augmented chord. So a real cool sounding chord. But let's try one and two together first. So we have on the end of three, two and three, and one and two and three and pluck, strum, strum. So straight quarter notes, one, two, three for that second bar. Now this augmented chord, it's a little tricky change from G7. Okay, so watch what happens. That middle finger goes up a half step and then these fingers need to flip-flop first and third. So that middle finger goes up a half step to the third fret. Ring finger goes underneath it, so it's the third fret of string two. And your index goes on the second fret of string one. We have an open G above it. So you wanna practice that change. So watch how these two flip-flop. So pretty tricky right there. So once you get a hang of that, here's what this bar sounds like. So we have one and two, three. So it's not too hard. We're gonna go strum, one, strum, open first. So lift that index finger up. Strum, one, strum, open first. Okay, then the last bar, open E, and strum the C twice. Okay, and we can just use that middle finger to grab the C. So again, E, strum, strum, so all quarter notes. So we have one and two, three, one, two, three. So actually this bar is pretty simple compared to some of the other ones that we've done so far. So again, I have. Okay, let's give it a shot, starting on the end of three. Two and three and one two and three and one, two, three, one and two, three, one, two, three. Now you can also count it as eighth notes if you need help staying in time a little bit better, but take into account which ones are quarter notes. Two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. So it's a little trickier doing that. Um, a good way that I like to approach it is just to think of it as the rhythm and sing it. It's kind of like we talked about earlier. Ba da 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 ba da 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 ba ba ba. Right. Ba do do da 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 ba da 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 da. Right. So again, I'm like a broken record, but if you can sing it, you can play it. So. That's a lot, guys, right? This this is 16 bars uh, for melody A plus four bars for the intro, so 20 bars into the song, but it's a lot of music already. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through nine through 16 and then one through 16. And this is everything that we've got so far, and that's the whole A melody. So nine through 16. Okay, so that's the second half. If I play the whole thing together for melody A. Then 
that's what we get all the way through. So it's a lot, right? So there's a lot to take in with this. And what you want to do is just work on part of it at a time, right? So get the intro down, then do the first eight bars of melody A, then do the second eight bars of melody A, and then try one through 16 for melody A before trying to go on to melody B. So let's go ahead and talk about melody B. A lot of it repeats. Uh, if I look at it on this sheet music here, I have one, two, three, four. The first four bars are identical to the first four bars of melody A. With those extra two hits. So those first four bars are the same. One, two, three, four. So nothing new happens there, but then we have the alternate endings. Really cool walk down. So let's take just that part, right? So it looks harder than it really is. A lot of it is just single note playing. So what I played right there was bar five and six for melody B. So let's break just that, the first two bars down right there. So we're gonna go ahead and start on this C chord. So it's basically just our pinky on the seventh fret of string one. So we're gonna strum all four strings and then we've got a little melody walk down. Okay. So basically what happens here is it's gonna be strumming seven, then going to five with your ring, then three with the index finger. Okay, so we have one and two, so straight eighth notes, one and two, move it down to the first fret, play that note, and then back to the fifth fret, and to the third fret. So seven, five, three, one, five, three, seven, five, three, one, Three, straight eighth notes. Strum five, three, one, five, three. That's the first bar. One and two and three and the second bar. So first it's a quarter. One, two, and three and... So let's try this one together. So we have first fret by itself for a quarter. Then we're gonna strum this chord, which is a C7. And then we're gonna play five, three, one. So all this melody is on the A string, right guys? One, strum, five, three, one. So again, one, strum, five, three, one. So we have seven, five, three, one, five, three, one, strum, five, three, one. So take into account that quarter note in bar two, right? One and two and three and one, two and three and... So it's not too hard once you get a hang of it. So think of melody B as these first six bars put together. So if I play these first six bars put together, I have... Okay, so you want to get that stuck in your head before you go on to the next part. Here's what the next part sounds like. Okay, so we've basically got quite a few chords that we're going to be strumming on. It's mostly quarter notes too. So we're going to take a stock F chord, so that's middle on the second fret of string four, index on the first fret of string two, and the rest are open. So we're going to strum that twice, down, down, then switch to an A7. So it's just one finger on the first fret of string three. So we have F, F, A, Sev, and then we're going to D minor. So make an F chord again, and add your ring finger to the second fret of string three. That's our D minor. So we're gonna strum that one twice. So all quarter notes for this, these two bars. So we have strum, 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 strum. Okay, and I'm just strumming down with my index finger. So F, F, A7, D minor, D minor. Keep D minor intact, add your pinky finger to the third fret of string one. That's gonna be a D minor seven. So we're gonna strum that and then quickly come up with an open A. Okay, so if I put those two bars together, guys, I have one, two, three, one, two, three, and. So the last one are eighth notes. That completes bar seven and eight. So we're eight bars into the melody B now. So again, F, 
F, A sev, D minor, D minor, D minor sev, open one. One, two, three, one, two, three, end. Now the next part gets a little tricky, but before we get there, here's one through eight. Okay, so let's try the new parts of this together slowly and I'll count it out. So we're gonna be skipping the first four bars. So we're starting on the fifth bar, which is that seven, that C chord. Two and three and one and two and three and one, two and three and F, F, A7, D minor. Okay, so the next part is tricky because we have some pretty complicated chord changes that are about to happen. So here's what the first two bars sound like. Yeah, quite a bit, right? So it's kicking off with that D minor sev. So keep all four fingers intact. You're gonna play string one, then you're gonna strum, then we're quickly gonna go to this diminished chord. So see how that pinky stays anchored, right? The other fingers uh, make the change, but the pinky stays anchored. And look at the change, it's basically a G chord moved up a string. So in essence, all you have is two, three, two, three. So those are the frets and the fingers are index, third, middle, pinky. Okay, so you wanna practice going from D minor, switch into this diminished. And remember, it's just a G chord. Remove the pinky, you have a G chord moved up a string. So that's the easy way to think of it, okay? Keep that pinky intact though. All right, and the next chord change that comes up in a little bit is an E minor, so it's that staircase shape. So we'll get there in just a sec. So we have first, strum, make the diminish, strum, lift the pinky up, play the open A. So again, we have first, strum, diminish, strum, open. So it's one, two, three, end. One, two, three, end. Real tricky stuff, right? One, two, three, end. Okay, put the pinky back down for the next bar. One, strum, E minor, strum, open four. So E minor is that staircase, right? So it's open, fourth fret, third fret, second fret. Okay, so let's try that again. So from the diminished for the last bar, we have one strum, then E minor, strum four. So again, one strum, strum four. So our rhythm is one, two, three, and. All right, so these bars are real tricky right here. So we're almost out of the hard part though, so hang tight. So let's put this into the context. If I start on the F, I have. Okay, it starts to make a little bit more sense and becomes easier to memorize and get down. So F, F, A7, D minor, D minor, ba da da da. Okay, so you just want to hit pause and work on these chord changes in these bars because they are hard. Now our next bar continues with E minor. So we're going to keep that E minor chord intact and it sounds like this. And that goes into the next bar. So it's one strum, strum, first fret. So you drop down to the first fret of string one. So keep the E minor intact. So we have one strum, strum one. So our rhythm is one, two, three, and. Okay. So again, we have one strum, strum one. All right, the next bar goes to open A and make that A7 chord strum twice. So 
If we look at those two bars together, starting on E minor, one strum, strum, one, oh, strum, strum. So let's take this section again with that ending. So we're starting on F. We can try together, starting slow. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay, at the end of that bar, you're starting the tag, so three times in a row of that same G7 lick we played earlier. So it starts on the end of three for that A7 bar, and one and two and three and pluck, strum, strum, and one and two and three and pluck, strum, strum, and one and two and three and pluck, strum, strum. Now that last one are gonna be quarter notes, right? Just like we saw before, pluck, strum, strum. So you have that three times in a row, and then you have your ending for this melody B, which is a really cool ending. So it's straight out of a C chord, so you can make a C. We have this quick hammer on pull off lick, so it's open, hammers onto third fret, goes back to open A. And then we'll follow up with four, two. So this quick little hammer-on is a 16 to an eighth note. So it happens all in beat two. One, two, three, end. One, two, three, end. So again, one, two, three, end. All right, so we have strum, hammer, pull off, four, two, and then finally, open third. And that finishes up the last bar. And that's gonna hold out for that bar. So there's a lot to this, guys. Remember that the first four bars were the same as the first four bars for the A melody. So you had... That was the same. Then the new part for B starts with that C walk down. Right, and then we're into the Fs and that chord changes. So tricky stuff here, D minor 7, diminish, E minor, A7, to the G7. So really, really tricky things here, and there's a ton of music in this one. So this is a really good lesson where I highly recommend the tabs to follow along with, as well as access to that on-screen tab viewer, because you can literally loop sections. So whatever section you're working on, if you're working on a couple bars at a time, you can highlight those bars, loop it, slow it down to whatever speed you need, and work at your own pace, work it up to the speed that you want. So the recording speed of mine is about 135 beats per minute, which is a quick tempo. One thing to keep in mind is this song sounds great even if you play it a bit slower. So you, you know, if it's too fast for you, that's fine. It still sounds great if you play it at like 100 or so. So just keep that in mind too. So guys, we've learned the intro, the A melody, and the B melody. So that is 40 bars into this song. <laughs> a lot of music. So we're gonna be covering the second uh, part of this tune, the second half, in part two video lesson at rockclass101.com. So just do a search for Magic Ukulele Waltz, or you can click this link here. Remember, all those assets that I just talked about, you can get too with premium membership at rockclass101.com. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tune. Keep up with the practice. It's a lot of work, but it's a very rewarding song when you get it down. And be sure to check out Ukulele Zaza. He wrote an awesome arrangement. So go check out his music too. All right, guys, I'll see you in part two. Thanks.